Look at this, $400 a year, $3,000 a license. Ethical hacking has a massive paywall problem. If you're a student, a beginner, or just someone who doesn't have a corporate budget, it feels like you're bringing a knife into a gunfight. But here's the secret the industry doesn't tell you. The landscape has shifted. In 2025, the best hacking tools aren't just expensive ones, they are the smart ones. I'm talking about AI power tools that automate the boring stuff, find vulnerabilities you definitely miss, and write your entire exploit code for you. I have actually spent the last two weeks testing every free AI security tool I could find. Most were trash, but these five? These five are terrifyingly good. Today we are going deep. I'm not just listing them, I'm going to show you exactly how to install them, how to configure them, and how to use them to hack, ethically of course, buckle up. Let's start with defense, because you can't hack if your own machine is compromised. We all know the risk. You're investigating a phishing site, or you're downloading a sketchy tool from GitHub to test it. One wrong click, and your PC is part of botnet. For instance, Intersquare X. This isn't just a browser extension. It's an isolated, disposable computer living inside your Chrome tab. Now, if you want to install it, go to your Chrome web store, search for Square X, install it. It's actually free. Now let's talk about the disposition feature. Click the extension. You see this option? Disposable file viewer. This is magic. Let's say you get a suspicious PDF in an email. Do not download it into your desktop. Right click it, select open in Square X. What just happened? Square X fired up a disposable container on their servers. The PDF is open, but it's not on your computer. If there's a malicious script embedded, inside that pdf trying to call back to a c2 server or something it's calling back from square x's cloud not your home ip you are now invisible they also do have a disposable email feature stop using your real email for ctf signups or sketchy forums generate a burner email here get your verification code and when you close the tab that email address ceases to exist it is the ultimate opsec tool for beginners now this pro tip goes for my advanced users. Square X recently won awards in 2025 for browser detection and response. It can actually block malicious extensions that try to steal your cookies. Keep this run in the background while you browse. It's your safety net. Okay, let's get offensive. If you've ever played a CTF, captured the flag, or even tried hack the box, you know the feeling. You run nmap, you find port 80 open, and then your mind goes blank. You forget what to do next. This is Pentest GPT. It is not just asking chat GPT, how do I hack? It is a structured tool that runs in your terminal and guides you through the entire penetration testing process, like a senior mentor sitting right next to you. Now watch this workflow. I tell Pentest GPT, I am targeting a certain machine at this this IP address. And the logic is, it just doesn't guess, it tells me exactly, okay. Start with nmap scan. And the loop is, I run the scan, paste the output back into Pentest GPT, it reads the nmap results and says, I see an Apache server on version maybe 2.4.49. That version is vulnerable to path transversal. Here's the exact command to test it. Notice what it didn't do? It didn't hack the server for me. It reasoned through the problem. It tracks your progress in a to-do list inside the tool so you never get lost. It effectively gives you the methodology of a pro hacker. If you are studying for your OSCP or CEH, this is the single best study buddy you can have. Number 3. The easiest way to hack a company in 2025 isn't an elaborate zero-day exploit. It's finding a password that a lazy developer accidentally uploaded to GitHub. Now this is Trufflehog. There are two ways to use this, and you need to use both. First method is by using the Chrome extension. Install it, and now go ahead, browse the internet, go to a target's website, maybe their JS files. Trufflehog sits in the background scanning for high entropy streams. Basically, things that look like API keys, for instance, AWS keys, Google Cloud keys, or Slack tokens. Now, after some time, it just found a hard-coded API key in this website source code. That is a crucial vulnerability you can report for a bounty immediately. But the real power is the command line interface. Let's say you are auditing for a company's open source code. Run this command. It digs through the entire commit history. That means, if a developer posted a password in 2021, realized their mistakes 10 minutes later, and deleted it, Trufflehog remembers. It finds the deleted commit and hands you the password. And here's why Trufflehog is the GOAT. It has a feature called verification. 
it doesn't just find a string that looks like a key, it silently pings the provider and check if the key is live and active. It filters out the false positives so you do not have to waste any of your time. Now for the fourth tool, cursor. We need to talk about writing code. Whether it's a python script to brute force a login or a bash script to automate rec- You need to write tools. Cursor is an AI fast code editor. It's a fork of VS Code, so all your extensions work, but the AI integration is terrifying. Look at this, I open a new file, I hit Ctrl K, and then I type in, write a multi-threaded port scanner in Python that saves open ports to a text file. In 10 seconds, it writes perfect error-free code. But let's go deeper, let's say I found an exploit on ExploitDB, but it's written in Ruby and I hate Ruby. I paste the code into cursor, highlight it and say, translate this exploit into Python 3 and add error handling. Done. You now have a working exploit in your language of choice. Now, a warning for my ethical hackers. In 2025, researchers found that cursor's workspace trust feature could be risky if you open malicious repositories. If you're analyzing malware code, do not open it in cursor unless you really know what you're doing. Use it to write your tools, not to analyze viruses. Finally, OSINT, or you can say open source intelligence. Tracking locations, finding people, analyzing physical security from photos, the new multimodal AI models. Gemini 2.0 and ChatGPT 4.0 are basically Sherlock Holmes. Now, I did test this with a random photo of a street in Singapore. I actually uploaded it to both. Now, ChatGPT is great at reading text. If there's any tiny phone number on a billboard in the background, just ask ChatGPT. Extract all text from this image and it pulls it out perfectly. Now, let's talk Gemini. Gemini is the king of reasoning. I asked, where was this taken? It looked at the shape of the electrical outlets, the color of the taxi, and the foliage, and it triangulated the country correctly. Do not just upload the image, ask the AI. Analyze the metadata and the visual cues. What time of the day was this taken based on the shadows? What camera model likely took this? You are training the AI to be your forensic analyst for CTFs where you have to find a location from a photo. This is a shit code. Listen to me closely. These tools, SquareX, Pentest GPT, Trufflehog, Cursor, and the AIs, they lower the barrier to entry, but they don't replace the hacker mindset. You still need to understand what the hell you're doing. Now, I've put a link in the description to a GitHub repository where I've listed all these tools plus the exact prompts I use for the AI. Go, clone it, start it, and start building your lab. Now, if you want to see me use Pentest GPT to hack a live server in real time, get this video to 1000 likes and I'll drop that video next week. Don't forget to subscribe, stay safe, and stay paranoid. And happy hacking! So, with that being said, so I think I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers!